In this lesson, we're solving radical equations and equations containing radicals. The definition of a radical equation is an equation where variables occur in one or more radicands. That means under the radical sign. So here's some examples of radical equations and ones that are not. The square root of 2x plus 1 equals 5 is a radical equation because the x is part of the radicand, which means it's under the radical sign. Square root of x minus 2, that algebraic expression, then minus 7 equals negative 4 is a radical equation. We've got the x minus 2 as part of the radicand. Also, the cube root of x equals negative 3 is a radical equation as well. This is the square root of 2 times x. x is not under the radical sign, not part of the radicand. It's not a radical equation, but it's an equation that contains a radical in it. Likewise, so is the next. That's the cube root of 5 plus x equals the cube root of 9. x is not under the radical sign. All right, we've got a theorem that we need to work with, and we know from Algebra 1 when we're solving equations, when a equals b is true, and n is any normal number, any real number, we know that we could add the same thing to both sides, subtract the same thing from both sides, multiply both sides by the same number as long as it's not zero, divide by both sides by the same number as long as it's not zero. The other thing we can do is raise both sides of the equation to the same power. So that's called the principle of powers, and that will help us in solving these radical equations. So your job is to isolate one of the radical terms. Now we say that because sometimes there's two radicals in the same equation, so we need to get one of them by itself. Then we need to use the aforementioned theorem, the principle of powers, raise both sides of an equation to a power that will eliminate the radical. And then if a radical remains, repeat steps one and two again. And again, with this information, we must check our answers. It's not just something nice to see that we did the correct work. It's essential because we can get extraneous roots, which again means an extra answer, and they may work, but they may not work, and we have to check them to find out. That's the only way we'll know. All right, so in this case, <clears throat> let's, the radical is already isolated, step one. So to undo square roots, we're going to square both sides. That's step two. Square both sides. What we've learned early in the chapter, when you square a square root, that leaves us with the radicand, which is 2x minus 3. And 1 squared is equal to 1, so add 3 to both sides. 2x is equal to 4, divide both sides by 2, and x is equal to 2. Now, we think everything is done, but we're not. We need to look at step 4, which says to check our answer. So to check our answer, replace x with 2, and we're not sure. Is that going to equal 1? We'll find out. 2 times 2 is 4. Simplify. Now this is very important. Simplify what's under the radical first. 4 minus 3 is 1, and the square root of 1 is 1. So my answer checks out, and that's a solution. So make sure you do step 4. Check your solutions to make sure that they work. All right, let's look at another example in this one. We need to get the radical by itself. So we're going to undo subtraction by 1. The way we undo subtraction is addition. So adding 1 to both sides is 2 times the cube root of x equals 4. To get the radical by itself, we need to undo multiplication by 2. And we do that by division by 2. It gives me the cube root of x is equal to 2. At this point, what we need to do is undo the cube roots. And there's only one thing that undoes cube roots, and that's raising to the third power. So we need to cube both sides of the equation. Cubing a cube root undoes the radical, just leaves me with the radicand x. 2 to the third power is 8. We think that's our answer, but we need to check to make sure. So I replace x with 8. The cube root of 8 is 2. 2 times 2, we'd need to do multiplication before subtraction. 2 times 2 is 4. 4 minus 1 is 3. And that checks out, so 8 works as our answer. However, any time you raise both sides of an equation to a power larger than 1, your answer may not work. So we must do the checking just to be sure. All right, so what we need to be careful about 
is my little caution sign here. Watch out for extraneous roots. So this tree, yes, it's a bad joke, I know. That tree's got a little extraneous root. Watch out for them or you will trip over them. And again, when you raise both sides of a radical equation to a power larger than one, squaring, cubing, raising to the fourth, using the principle of powers, the resulting equation can have a solution that's not a solution to the original equation and we can get an extraneous root or an extra answer. The only way to determine that is to check your answers to verify that all of our roots satisfy the original, original equation. All right, now that we've had that warning for extraneous roots, let's continue on with example two. And in this scenario, we've got x occurring in two places. What we need to do is to try to get this radical by itself, as we stated before. So we're going to subtract 3x from both sides. And that's negative 5 times the square root of x is 2 minus 3x. And multiply everything by negative 1. So positive 5 times the square root of x is positive 3x minus 2. And I just switched sides of the equal sign. Put what was on the left on the right, what was on the right to the left. And we're going to square both sides of the equal sign. Now, I could divide by 5 first before squaring. I could get that radical truly by itself, divide by 5. Then I would be squaring the fraction over here on the left. But be careful when you square a binomial that you will should end up with a trinomial. Make sure you watch out for that. So let's take the first one and square it is 9x squared. Multiply those two, negative 6x, and double it is negative 12x. Take the last one, including its sign, and square it is plus 4. 5 squared is 25. The square root of x squared is x. Let's get all the x's on the same side of the equal sign by subtracting 25x from both sides. Now let me just pause for a second. The fundamental theorem of algebra says that our largest exponent is how many answers we're looking for. So right now, x to the first, we're looking for one solution. At this point, our equivalent equation is now x squared, which means we're looking for two solutions. Yes, there could be an extraneous root, an extra answer. So let's continue on in this pursuit and see what happens next. We factor this using trial and error. So 9, well, factor is 9 times 1. Looks to me like 4 is going to be 1 and 4. Outside is negative 36x, inside is negative 1x, that gives me the negative 37x. Use the zero product property to set each one equal to zero. Solve each equation. If 9x is equal to 1, then x is 1 ninth. If x minus 4 is equal to zero, then x could equal 4. So we have two solutions now, and we were only expecting one. And that means we certainly must check our solutions. Let's check our roots to see which ones work. So let's start out with 1 ninth. Replace x with 1 ninth. Simplify that. 3 times 1 ninth is 1 third. Square root of 1 ninth is 1 third. 5 times 1 third is 5 thirds. 1 third minus 5 thirds is negative 4 thirds. And nope, negative 4 thirds is not the same as 2. So instead of a bonus answer here, we've got a bogus answer. We have to throw out 1 ninth. It does not satisfy the original equation. It is not our root. It was an extraneous root. does not work. So throw that one out. Now that does not automatically mean 4 will work. We must check 4. So replace x with 4. 3 times 4 is 12. Square root of 4 is 2. 5 times 2 is 10. 12 minus 10 is 2. And it turns out in this case that 2 is equal to 2. And in this case, then, my other solution is a root. So x equals 4 is my solution to the original equation. All right, let's take a look at the next one. The next one is a little different in that there are two radicals. And we need to be very careful. Our first job is to isolate one of the radicals. Because students make mistakes squaring binomials, some of you think, well, if I just square the left side, the radicals will drop out. No, it will not. When you square a binomial, you get a trinomial, and you will still have a radical. So let's subtract one of the radicals. So I'm left with the square root of x minus 3 equals 4 
minus the square root of x plus 5. Now I'm going to square both sides of the equation. Again, when I raise to a power larger than 1, we can get an extraneous root. On the left, squaring and the square root undoes each other, leaves me with the radicand x minus 3. And be careful as you square this binomial, you take the first term and square it. You multiply these two terms together and double it. You take the last term, including its sign, and square it. And I'll do that simplification in the next step. 4 squared is 16. 2 times 4 is 8. Negative times negative is positive. Squaring a negative becomes positive, and squaring undoes the square root, leaving me with the radicand x plus 5. All right, again, we need to get all the radicals together, but first, 5 plus 16 is 21. Let's subtract 21 from both sides, subtract x from both sides as we attempt to get the remaining radical by itself. And we end up with negative 24 equals 8 times the square root of x plus 5. Divide everything by 8. Negative 3 is the square root of x plus 5. Now excuse my drawing, the radical sign should be over the 5. Let's square both sides again. So we're squaring two times in this procedure. Squaring the square root leaves me with the radicand x plus 5, and a negative 3 times itself is positive 9. Subtract 5 from both sides. x is 4, we think. But we must check our work. So let's start with the original equation. Replace the x's with 4's and see if we have a true statement. 4 minus 3 is 1. 4 plus 5 is 9. The square root of 1 is 1. The square root of 9 is 3. And yes, 1 plus 3 equals 4. And so in that case, what we have is we do have one root. After all that work, we do have one root that satisfies the original equation. And that happens to be x is equal to 4. All right, what we need to look at next is not a radical equation, but an equation that contains radicals. Again, the difference here is the variable is not under the radical sign itself. So it's an equation containing a radical. So looking at this example, none of the x's are under the radical signs. x does occur more than once, so we have to get them all together. And let's do that by bringing them on the same side of the equal sign. We do that by subtracting x to the square root of 5 from both sides. That gives me 3x minus x square root of 5 equals 2. Now we had to do that because on the left side of the equation, x is the greatest common factor. If we factor that out, 3x divided by x is 3. Negative x square root of 5 divided by x is minus the square root of 5. And x is being multiplied by some a binomial in parentheses. To get x by itself, I will divide both sides of the equation by that binomial. On the left, anything divided by itself divides out to 1. It gives me x. On the right, remember we can't leave the radical in the denominator. And when you have a binomial containing a radical, you must multiply by the conjugate of the denominator. And you've got to multiply the numerator by that as well. So distributing that out in the numerator, 2 times 3 is 6. 2 times the square root of 5 is 2 square root of 5. We know there are conjugates in the denominator, so we just do the first, which is th 9. And the last, which is negative the square root of 25. Simplifying that, square root of 25 is 5. 9 minus 5 in the denominator is 4, and we're almost there. But our numerator 6 plus 2 squared to 5 has a greatest common factor of 2. When we factor out that greatest common factor of 2, we're left with 3 plus the square root of 5. 4 can be factored as 2 times 2. And that 2, that's a factor in the numerator and the denominator, divides out to 1. And my answer is 3 plus the square root of 5 over 2. Now, I'm not checking my answer. I could, but I don't have to. Because in the process of solving this equation, we never raised both sides of the equal sign to a power larger than 1. Because the variable was un under the radical sign. So that's our look at radical equations and equations containing radicals.